Perhaps one of the most hotly and intensely debated conversations out there is around consumer credit and how many credit cards are the right amount. Some people are gonna say, hey, get as much credit as you can, the sky's the limit. Some people are gonna say, hey, you know, if you don't have any credit cards, that's even better for you. So let's get real about credit and decide how many is right for you. My name is Andrew Finney and my passion is helping you make sense of real estate. If you need help finding a top agent near you or if you simply want to drop me a line to say hello, my contact info is below. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel now and like this video. Thank you. All right, my friend, let's take a closer look at this because here's the truth. The truth is, is it's not necessarily the quantity of the credit cards that are going to hurt you in as much as how much you have on those credit cards. Your FICO is not really taking into account that you have 25 different credit cards. What they are looking at is your debt utilization. So let's take a closer look at exactly what that means to you to help you plan this out. The first thing is what really matters about credit to begin with. Whenever we're looking at your FICO and your Vantage credit score, what's being taken into account is what's called your revolving utilization or your debt to credit limit ratio. Both terms are describing the relationship on your credit report in between how much debt that you have in relation to what your maximum limit is on your credit card. To help bring this to life, let's go over the calculus behind this when we're talking about your debt to credit limit ratio. The way this looks in an equation format is taking your credit card balance, dividing it by the account limit, and multiplying the result by 100. To bring this to life, let's say that you have a credit card with a $5,000 available balance, and let's say that you have $2,500 of revolving utilization on that credit card. That would mean that you have a 50% utilization rate on your credit card balance. The second thing to know is when is it more helpful to have more credit cards? Now, you may have noticed on places like Credit Karma that having more credit cards and having Having a lower aggregate revolving balance on those cards are extremely helpful to your credit score factors that go into your actual FICO score. In fact, having a credit utilization around 10% to 20% is more ideal. And if you're not there right now, it's okay. Just shoot for the mark and getting it down to 10 to 20% and you're going to be great as your credit score starts to improve. One trick here is that the more available credit that you have, the easier it is to hit that 10 to 20%. On the other hand, if you have a few low limit available credit cards, it can make it a lot more of a challenge. So here's an example that can show you how having more credit cards could benefit you. But again, please make sure that you're making the best decision for you. And please understand that just because you have more credit cards with more credit limit doesn't mean to go out and charge it. This is about how to boost your credit score and help you get into a better financial position. This is about how best to boost your credit score and not hurt you. In the first example, let's say that you have two credit card accounts. One of them is with the Right Way Bank and the other one is with the Bank of Fun. Now let's say with the Right Way Bank that you have a credit card limit of $500 and that you owe $200 on that credit card. And with the fun bank that you have a credit card balance with the same amount of money for $500 and let's say that you owe $400 on that. To come up with your aggregate credit utilization, let's add the amount that you owe and divide it into your total available balance. So if we take $400 and we add it to the $200 that you owe, that's $600. $600 divided by $1,000 means that you would have a credit utilization rate of 60%. In the second example, let's say that you have five credit card accounts. Let's say that you have a right way bank account with $500 credit limit and you have $300 on that credit card. And with the fun bank that you have a $500 credit limit and you owe $500. Now let's say you have a third credit card account with your way bank with a $1,000 credit limit and this credit card you don't owe anything. And with Neverland Free Bank, you have a $4,000 credit line and you owe nothing on that balance. And for your fifth account, you have an account with Not Your Uncle's Bank for a $10,000 credit line and you have a zero balance. So the sum total of the different credit lines here is $16,000, while the sum debt on each of the credit cards combined, the aggregate total, is $800. So if we take your total balance that you owe, $800, and we divide it out by your total available credit of $16,000, that would give you a decimal of point. 0 0.05 times 100 turns that into 5% credit card utilization rate. So you see in both examples, we both had $800 of revolving debt. But in the first example, we only had two credit cards. And in the second example, we had five credit cards, but three of them, you weren't carrying a balance. So taking the aggregate total, the first one puts you to 60% utilization. And in the second example of having five credit cards, three with no balances, you had a 5% utilization, which is beating the suggested 10% to 20% limit that 
that you would have on your revolving credit balance, which will help you be able to get a higher credit score. So from these two examples that we had today, now you know some different ideas and different ways that you can boost your credit score and how many credit cards you should get. Now it's important to know, and I wanna back up to this again, be real with yourself and be honest with yourself. If you're that person that when you get a new credit card and your limit's like $1,000 and you're like, hey, I gotta go shopping, I gotta go out there and spend it, then probably this isn't a good strategy for you. Let's just be honest, let's just be real. At the same time, if you're the more fiscally prudent person that does wanna boost their credit score and these kind of options might help you, then consider getting a couple of extra credit cards and how it's gonna impact you. Of course, the best source of information on anything with credit is gonna be a credit repair specialist or a mortgage loan officer that can put you in the right direction. And as an added incentive to keep your credit card balances in check, consider this. If you're thinking about buying a home, then how much debt that you owe on those credit cards will factor into what's called a debt to income ratio. I've done a video about that if you wanna check it out in specific to learn what a debt to income ratio is and why it's important to you. Essentially, if you have a higher debt to income ratio, even if you have really good income, it's gonna put a damper on how much home loan that you can get. And this is also gonna be true if you're considering refinancing your mortgage. Just make sure that whatever you decide is the right decision for you. And the only one that can really answer that is you. All right, my friends, so now that you know how to boost your credit score and more about how to determine the right amount of credit cards for you, let's talk about the best strategy to pay off debt and the seven avoidable fees that are costing you money. Looking forward to our next conversation. We'll see you in a few.